I'm here with Matt from Lilium. I'm fascinated by the aircraft that we've got behind us. It's a very distinctive looking aircraft. I wonder if you can tell me a little bit more about it. Yeah, so behind us is the Lilium jet. It's the world's first electric vertical takeoff and landing jet. So it's got 30 engines across the wings and canard, fully electric, up to six passengers, a commercial pilot on board, and we really hope to change the way people move between city to city using this technology. The real possibilities is in enabling regional transportation, so regional air mobility, that's connecting city to city. So at launch, this aircraft will have 175 kilometer range, but what we know about battery technology is that it's constantly growing, and so we see that growing tremendously in terms of what cities we can connect. So we want to be able to really change the way someone in one city is getting to another city, and that's from an economic development standpoint, that's from a vacation standpoint, it might be business, whatever it might be, we want to help people connect to those cities. And you know, the, the great thing about building new technology and going through the EASA certification process is that we get to work uh, with EASA directly on those rules, and so we want to make sure that it's safe, efficient to operate, and so we'll have enough reserves, we'll have enough energy in there to make sure that if there's an issue at our intended destination, we can divert and get to the right spot. And I can see uh, distinctive ducted fans on it, and 30 of them, as you mentioned. Uh, maybe you can speak more to the design specification for that and why, why it has that. The first thing it does is it looks like a jet. It looks like an aircraft people want to get on. And so that's super important. Are they more efficient than other types of fan? So where the efficiency gain on these ducted electric vector thrust jets comes in is at cruise. So our lift to drag ratio is incredibly low, which means once we're up, we have very low drag. And that means that as battery technology gets better, we can go further and further. Whereas if you had an open rotor concept, you'd have more drag and you're not able to go as far each time you get more uh, battery capacity. So for the first time probably in the history of aviation, you could buy an aircraft from us today and in 10 years, it will be better than when you bought it but it's also incredibly safe. So by having these ducted electric vector thrust jets, we ensure safety. So if there is an issue with an engine, blade loss, things like that, we know exactly what's happening there. And that allows us to achieve this 10 to the minus nine level of safety. That's the highest level of safety in aviation. So when you get on a commercial jet, it's 10 to the minus nine. And so we think it's super important that at launch, we have a jet that is one of the safest that's out there in the market and that people feel comfortable and safe. We want to operate safely, but the regulator is going to ensure that we have a safe aircraft. They literally look at the probability of a failure of any single uh, component and, and concept within the aircraft. And based on that probability, that determines how redundant we have to be so that we can get down to that 10 to the minus nine. That's actually referring to the likelihood of some catastrophic failure. They want it to basically be almost next to impossible that you would have any sort of catastrophic failure on an aircraft. The other thing the, uh, these electric jets enable is quietness, right? So it's really key that this is quiet, not just inside the aircraft, but outside the aircraft, because eventually we want to be able to go places that today aviation can't go. So not only are we sustainable from a, a true environmental standpoint of our emissions, but we're sustainable environmentally in terms of the noise that we're going to produce in the environments that we operate. Going back to the ducted fans, why do we see it only on the Lilium jet? Uh, I don't know why you're only seeing a Lilium jet. We think it's a, it's, a, it's a fantastic design. You know, there are lots of challenges to any sort of air, aircraft design, but we think that the benefits that it provides for that comfort, for that safety, for that noise, really outweighs any of their costs. The, the reality is it, it's tough to build something and be the first ones to build it, but we think it's super important to do it right. So I've only seen this on film. This is the first time I've seen it in the flesh or in the metal. And uh, it looks great. It looks really, really like a kind of eVTOL executive jet. Yeah, we think uh, that one of the right ways that we want to go to market is starting with that premium segment first. So that's why here today you see our four passenger kind of club configuration version. That would be the one that we would start with premium. We can take those seats, flip them around, add a row and get six passengers in there for our kind of shuttle version of the aircraft. That's where you might buy a ticket. But we think day one operations, it makes sense that we're selling it privately. We have a pioneer edition of our aircraft. These are people who already own aircraft. This will be an extension of their existing aircraft fleet. We get it right, we bring down our costs and we get to that $2 uh, uh, per seat kilometer that we want to be able to offer very quickly here on that shuttle market. So have you got uh, orders from private individuals on your order book? We have uh, over 100 binding orders and we expect that next year, early next year, when we have our first crewed flight of the full size version, this aircraft behind us, uh, that will have even more orders flowing in. Is there any potential to incorporate hydrogen fuel cells? Because they can extend range significantly also. 
you know, we think there's lots of exciting technologies out there of what's coming in aviation and you know, candidly, we don't think that the hydrogen is ready for the market today. And so we're very focused on our battery electric concept and bringing that to market, you know, so we can commercialize in 2026. Hydrogen just wouldn't be ready for, for that. What's the, what's the pinch point? What's the critical path for delivering this, this new service? So what we don't think about when you're charging a battery, it's gotta be cooled. So in an electric vehicle, there's an onboard system that cools your battery that weighs. So we made a decision to actually keep that onboard cooling, essentially have that onboard cooling in our aircraft so you don't have to have a cooling tank of, of, of liquid that would be injected into the aircraft to help cool the batteries. That was, that, it's probably long-term gonna be something that we look at, but for day one operations, there's no airport in any country that has that. Can you outline uh, your path to certification? So we are going to have the first uh, two of our aircraft that are in production right now. The first one will go into ground testing later this year. The second one will have its first crewed flight early next year. And those aircraft and that series of aircraft will go through our certification process, which is what brings us to that 2026 commercialization. Matt, it's a fantastic looking aircraft. Thanks so much for taking the time today to talk me through it. Yeah, absolutely. Hope you enjoy it.